Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and we are going to be testing our herd for three commonly tested for diseases that goats can get, CL, CAE, and Yonis. Uh, we're going to show you step by step from choosing the lab to filling out the paperwork, drawing the blood, and shipping it off. So CL is a disease that actually attacks the lymph nodes um, of a goat. It's very contagious and what happens is uh, that bacteria just attacks the lymph nodes until they fill, um, fill with a really thick yellow pus uh, until that lymph node actually explodes. If it does explode and gets into the soil or say even on the fencing or on the feeders, anything like that, then of course they're going to pass it on to the other animals and it does stay, uh, the bacteria stays alive for several months after um, it explodes. CAE is a viral disease um, that will attack their joints. So mainly it's a form of a really bad form of arthritis. Um, it can affect their lungs and their udders as well. And that is extremely contagious also. And the third disease we're going to be testing for is called Yonis. Uh, a lot of people will call it Johns because that's how it seems to be spelt, but it's actually pronounced Yonis. Um, and that is a gastrointestinal disease, which will just thicken up their intestines to where the goat may be eating and has a very large appetite, but in essence they're just starving to death because their intestinal wall is not absorbing the nutrition from the feed that they're eating. So there's several labs that you can actually send your blood into. The lab that we've always used is Waddell, uh, W-A-D-D-L, and of course I will link that website below. Um, but they have um, a wide range of, of testings that they will do. The test that we are going to do, again, we're doing the three, and it comes in a group. It's a $30 test. It's a small ruminant biosecurity screen. Um, so that's the one that we do for all of our animals. Waddell is a really great lab. They have a really great website. Um, and as well, if you have any questions or need to call them, they're just extremely informative and, and happy to answer any questions that they have. So they're a great lab. So the forms that you're gonna need is an accession form that you're gonna fill out and just explains what testings you want and your address and so forth. Um, and then an identifi animal identification form if you have more than one animal. So I'll show you what those forms look like. All right, so this is the accession form. Um, this top part here would be if you're a vet, you would fill in this part, so don't worry about that. Um, you're gonna come down here to the second part, fill out your farm name, if you have one, your first and last name, you as the owner of the animal. Um, is it your first time submitting, yes or no? If it's not, then you're gonna be on file with them already. And of course, your address, um, phone number, and email. And then down here, you're gonna. For, this is for billing. You're gonna say that you're the owner. And what type for these tests? We're sending in blood, so that's what it wants to know. And then the date you collected the blood, and then the date you are going to ship the blood. Let's see here. And then this is uh, what testing you're gonna be doing. So I just hit other, and then I put right here small ruminant biosecurity screen, because again, that's what we're testing for. Those three. It's called that. And then the animal ID. If you have one animal, you'll just put the animal's name here. Um, I just said reference ID sheet, which is the second sheet that we filled out. I'll show you. And then the species, we have goat, breed, Nigerian dwarf. Um, again, you can fill in age and sex and animal weight if it's one animal. Otherwise, don't worry about it. And then um, number in the group. How many goats are you testing? Um, are there any dead? Any sick? number on your land, and then duration of problem. So if you don't have any issues, of course, just put NA, not applicable. And then, um, let me see here. If you need to give them any additional information, this is where you're gonna put it. Like, are, did they just take any uh, vaccines? Are there any tests that came back positive for anything and so forth? Uh, otherwise, you can put NA if nothing is, is needed to be mentioned. And then you just sign uh, sign and date it here. So this is the identification sheet for multiple animals. So we will be testing 25. Um, so I'm putting every one of their names and then on the vials that I'll show you guys here in just a second. So this has one and then a blue cactus Merle Haggard. So that will be number one 
on the vial, I'm going to put the number one as well as his name. That way, just in case, if anything gets rubbed off, they can read the number one and so forth. And that will carry through for all of the vials. All right, so next we're gonna go over the supplies that you're gonna need uh, to draw the blood. So first off, you're gonna have to make sure that you have these red top um, vials to hold the blood. Now, they don't have any additives in them. You don't want anything in the bottom of these tubes. It's just a plain, clean tube that you're gonna put the blood in. And of course, like I mentioned, you're gonna number it and put the goat's full name on that vial. You might want some latex gloves. Um, you're gonna want some clippers because we're gonna shave the area of the neck that we're gonna actually draw the blood from. You're gonna need a, um, I use six cc's um, because we're, we're aiming for three to five milliliters of blood is what we're, what we're wanting. So I'm gonna use a syringe that's six cc's. I use an 18 gauge needle. You can use a 20 gauge as well. I like using the 18 gauge just because it's a bigger gauge and the blood comes out a lot quicker. It's just a quicker process for the goat. You will, of course, need cotton balls and alcohol to clean the area. And the goat. And then we're ready to draw blood. Now, the goat has two main veins on either side of their neck. So you could, you could draw the blood from either side. I always use it on the left. So what I'm going to do is have my little helper hold her head up. And right here can feel like an indent and almost a crease in their neck on both sides and that's where I'm going to shave it here. Here, she might need to come forward just a bit, bub. There we go. Okay. Alright, so you're going to pinch off this vein and you're because what it's going to do is actually get it filled with blood so that it starts popping out and it's real easy to see. I hope you guys can see that, but it's right here. So you're gonna clean the area with alcohol. Have that cotton ball handy when you pull out the needle. All right. Now this needle, you're wanting the long sharp part to be against the skin. And you're aiming right for that vein there. Her vein is not really popping out, guys. Don't freak out about it. I mean, I know it's right here, so I'm going to do my best to not have to prick her twice. Put it in there. And draw the blood. Aim for five. Perfect. Now you get your cotton ball. Hold it there, pull it out. Good girl. Good girl. So that's actually one of the easiest things you can really do. Um, it is very intimidating, but, and to be quite frank, I, I thought I was gonna have to prick her a couple times because her, her vein just wasn't bulging out. But um, yeah, you guys, it's super easy and it's so much more cost effective if you actually learn how to do this yourself rather than having the vet do it because it's expensive as it is. All right, so now we need to get the blood that we drew into her vial. So that is super easy. You're just going to punch it through the top. It actually just kind of sucks it out there for you. And that is it you have a vial of blood for this goat to be tested. All right, so now that we got the 25 goats in our herd, um, got all of their blood drawn, it's time to get it shipped off. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you do that. Uh, you are going to need some Ziploc bags. If you have a couple rubber bands to put around the tubes so that they're not clanking, that, that's really helpful also. Or you can roll each one in paper towels just really thick through. You just don't want them to break. Um, you are going to need some paper towels, just something um, to help absorb any if there is any leakage. And then we also have bubble wrap. So, and then the paperwork, of course, I'm putting in its own Ziploc bag. Say one of the one of the little vials busts open and leaks somehow onto your paperwork, then it's all for naught. All right. Oh, and you need an ice pack. So for starters, again, you're just going to Put some rubber bands around all of your tubes. 
I'm going to roll them up in the bubble wrap here. And then put it in this bubble wrap bag. there. I highly doubt there would be any leakage here, but you do want something absorbent, absorbent added to it. So I'm going to wrap them up in some paper towels. Okay, so now you put this Ziploc bag. And another Ziploc bag. Technically, you only have to do it twice. But I'm going to add another. Just because. Oops. Now, this one. Make sure you have like the leak proof. This isn't water or anything, and it's, it's kind of like a gel, so it's not going to leak on anything. I'm going to put this one in that Ziploc. Put. Put here. And there you go. So this is what I'm going to take to the post office, and then when I get a box, I'm just going to have this on the outside um, as well, so that this is completely away from any blood or anything like that. And this is what we're going to send into the lab. Alright guys, so I'm going to get headed off to the post office, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hope this helped you out. I know a lot of you have been asking for a video on how to draw blood and do all of this stuff. So here it is. And then we will have all of the links in the description below for you guys if you need any of the supplies. Again, thanks for watching. See you soon.